I hope that thing is going to work. You know, if this don't work, I'm going to find the quartermaster. <laughs> All right, we're trying again. You've changed a little bit since the last time. I'm... Well, yeah, I've aged some. <laughs> See, after my car accident in 1945 and I died, I became a ghost. I ain't changed a bit since then. No, you look like the pictures I've seen. You tell them some good stories? Well, I just start tell them some of the things that happened to me over there. You know, we're proud to honor our veterans. Let's give this man a big hand. <laughs> Yesterday they said freedom was not free, it came with a cost. And it truly did. But we have quite a few live veterans, live heroes, and we want to honor them all today. It's not just about World War II, it's every veteran that's ever served or every veteran that will serve. We have the finest armed forces in the world. You know, by God, I pity those people we're going up against. We're not going to just going to shoot them. We're going to go through them like crap through a goose. You remember that? I remember that. <laughs> now, we're waiting to get everybody up here. We're going to have a weapons demonstration for you. We're going to explain what these weapons are. We have one of the finest groups in uh, living history out here to do that. Uh, the uh, Able Company of Airborne, they are some of the best around. Uh, they'll be giving a weapons demonstration. We're going to explain what all these weapons, these vehicles are. One of the things that we want you to know as you visit these camps out here is it's all individually owned. Now you say, now wait a minute, what do you mean individually owned? Well, years ago, this stuff came out of the surplus and then it was played with by everybody in the world. They, they made deer, uh, went deer hunting with it and they played with it and they used it in electronics and everything else that they had and then it sat by the wayside and it became junk. And we said, that's, that's history, we don't want it junk. So each, each vehicle that you see out here has been restored back to its original configuration. And in 70 years, we talked to folks that fought World War II, the greatest generation. I'm gonna give you another grade in there. The people who made the equipment, their mothers and fathers, were the greater generation because the stuff that they made is still working 70 plus years after the fact. Each one of these vehicles represents hundreds of hours of love and each one of the weapons and gear that you're gonna see out here is the same way. Uh, it, it, it's a testament to the ingenuity of America that we can manufacture things that last and last and last. Now it's a pleasure for me to turn this over to our, our airborne and he's going to uh, explain all of this. He's gonna introduce himself and his group and everybody around him. Here you go. Good afternoon, folks. Look at the pretty fly boys, go on. Alrighty, I'm Lieutenant Bronikowski. I'm the executive officer of the 101st 50 Deuce Able Company. If you haven't been down to our company size camp, we have a full World War II company size grade camp. We can support up, a, up to about 200 folks. We've been out here sleeping in our bunks since Thursday night. We've been cooking every night. Uh, last night we had Swedish meatballs. The night before we had chicken cordon bleu, so we eat pretty good. So the 101st 50 Deuce, we represent the Airborne in World War II. We do the Parachute Infantry Regiment folks. We also have some folks who do the Glider Infantry Regiment. I'm a standard Parachute Infantry. That means I jump out of a C-47, or as the civilians call them, DC-3s, the Brits call them Dakotas, and they're also known as Goonie Birds. Our brethren and the Glider Infantry Regiments, they get in these little things made out of balsa wood down in Waco, Texas. They get picked up by a plane. This balsa wood device does not have any engines on its wings. They put their Jeeps inside, all their weapons. They get snatched off the flight line. They follow us. They cut the cord, and they glide in. So they're a, they're a little bit more trusting than we with our parachutes. What I'm gonna go over is some basic infantry weapons that the Americans used in World War II. The parachute infantry regiment, we're light. We're supposed to be aggressive, quickness and speed. We don't have a lot of heavy weapons. The gents behind us have those and they'll go over those in a little bit. 
We don't have artillery. We have mortars. If you go down to our camp, we have a mortar. On the side of it is written Aaron Rodgers because it is deadly, accurate, and long range. I grew up in Wisconsin. So the first weapon we're going to talk about is the 1903. Some things you need to understand about World War II and the American military. The American military was the first military to ever use the word aim in a command. Revolutionary War, a gentleman named Pulaski came over from Poland to teach our folks how to shoot and fight the Brits. Our phrase is, ready, fire. Nobody used that before. Before it was, ready, fire. So we have a hunting, a hunting tradition. This uses a 30-06 round. It's a hunting round. Makes sense, right? This is a copy. Basically, the 1903 Springfield is a copy of the 1898 Mauser. We made some changes to it. It takes five rounds off a clip. Go ahead and load. He'll be doing KP tonight. <laughs> you want to feed just one? <laughs> now you're going to see why we like the Grand so much. It's a bolted weapon. Go ahead and bolt the weapon and turn toward the flight line. Now remember, it's a hunting rifle. This was accurate out to about 800 yards. So 800 yards from here, I ran out there yesterday or last night. Do you see where those markers are and the yellow on the runway way out there? That's 800 yards. In those wonderful Hollywood movies with Errol Flynn. We do not shoot rifles 20 feet away from each other. Warfare is about keeping your guys over there and killing them over there, not over here. The farther away he is from me, the better it is for me. The reason why we used these in World War II is because we were woefully unprepared for World War II. We were like the 30th military but there was millions and millions of these in stock sitting in surplus. At the same time, we were providing to the British for Lend-Lease as well as the Australians. So this is what most of our folks use the first couple years, years of the war until we get enough manufactured grants. Go ahead and fire it, Lieutenant. Clear your weapon. 